What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. On to the show, and more stories point to progress on the iPhone 6 and next-gen iPad Air and iPad Mini. Now, component information website CEC B2B, not to be confused with the recent NKOTB BSB tour. See, that clip was for all you guys who make their girlfriends and wives watch the show with them. All right, now the report claims that Apple supplier Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing has provided the first batch of Touch ID fingerprint sensors to be used in the iPhone 6, iPad Air 2, and third gen iPad Mini. Previous reports claim TSMC will be using the same 8 inch fingerprint sensor process used in the iPhone 5S, and it's a good sign they're ahead of the game after the 5S launch with limited supplies due to production issues with Touch ID sensors. Now, it isn't a surprise they'll be finally bringing this to the iPads, but my hope is that they use it beyond just purchases and it could open up the possibility for multiple user profiles on iPads, something Apple has never done. All right, a new report from Mac Otakara says Apple supplier Pegatron has received 15% of the orders for Apple's upcoming 4.7 inch iPhone 6. The report says Pegatron is expected to produce 50 million iPhones this year and will aid with the production alongside of Foxconn. Now, rumors still point to the 4.7 inch iPhone shipping ahead of the 5.5 inch model due to display and battery production issues. And in another story about the larger screen iPhone 6, rumor site Weibo says 5.5 inch models may also see a limited production volume due to the high cost of quality Sapphire as a display material. Now, they estimate the Sapphire-based display may cost $280 in materials, which is a huge jump compared to the 4-inch Retina displays that cost roughly $44. Analysts are throwing around the idea that the Sapphire display model might be reserved for premium iPhone models at the higher end, like a 128-gig 5.5-inch model, and who are we kidding? People will end up wanting the Sapphire edition if it comes to that. You know it just rolls off the tongue. See, try it. Sapphire. Sapphire. Okay, I'll stop that. All right, according to 9to5Mac, Apple is planning to hold what they call an enormous iPhone-related event this week in order to boost sales. Beginning May 8th, Apple will be contacting upgrade-eligible iPhone users to come to their local Apple store to upgrade to a 5S or a 5C. <laughs> Say what? Look, Apple's going to try to move through inventory and upgrade people to a 5S or 5C when we're only three or four months away from Apple releasing a brand new iPhone. Friends don't let friends upgrade their phone before a new iPhone, and that's just a bad Apple. Oh! That's just bad, that's really bad. All right, on to iWatch news, and a Reuters source says Apple is considering a full health and fitness services platform modeled after its own app store. Now, this would allow companies to develop their own mobile medical applications that could tie into Apple's rumored biosensing device that some people are calling the iWatch. Nike recently shut down their entire fuel band division. It was my least favorite fitness band out of all of them. And their CEO said they will instead be focusing on software for their Nike fuel platform. Now, creating a whole new platform for a whole new device of this nature would be a smart move for Apple. And let's hope they try to keep apps around like spreadsheets that uh, track your sexual performance. And no, it will not be the app of the week because I can't demo it on camera. All right, rumor mills started buzzing after a suggestion on the anonymous information sharing platform Secret that claims Apple is planning to launch new EarPod headphones with integrated heart rate and blood pressure sensors that will require the lightning port. But the claim does have roots in previous Apple patent filings as far back as 2006, where Apple proposed using sensors integrated into accessories to collect physiological data. Now, Apple's concepts showed off a clip connected to your earlobe or the sensor adhering to your skin to monitor pulse or oxygen levels. And a more recent filing showed the sensor integrated into the earpiece. Now, other companies like LG showed off their heart rate monitor earphones at CES, so this is something that could happen. And another legal wrestling match between Samsung and Apple, round two is finally over. And a verdict was reached rewarding Apple 119.6 million dollars in damages, significantly less than the two billion dollars they were seeking, claiming Samsung infringed on their patents. The jury did find that Samsung infringed on Apple's slide to unlock feature and a few others, such as transforming text like an email address into an actionable link. Oh. 
The court also ruled Apple had infringed on some of Samsung's own property and awarded the Korean giant $158,000 in damages. The Big A was found guilty of infringing on a Samsung patent that deals with recording and storing digital images and audio. Now, we have some exclusive recordings of the conversations happening inside the courtroom during the past month. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present you the slide to unlock feature on the iPhone and those two cute little fishes. Aren't, aren't, aren't they so cute? Hey, Judge Ko. Yes? Are you free later tonight? Maybe. This is so hard to read. Does that say $119 or 119 million? Hey, Phil. Don't those things look like little candies? Mm -mm -mm, I love those candies. Hey, um, are you reading from actual transcripts? Yeah, these are totally authentic, man. Come on. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's show. Keep sending me your emails to theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys next week for another bite of the apple.